with the heavy heart that I am in front of you now to make this video um, kind of my last words. Um, it's really unfortunate that I have to make this video. You see, I am a victim of covert harassment uh, and electronic harassment and gang stalking. Um, I'm what's called a targeted individual. Um, there are thousands of targeted individuals in the United States of America um, and we unfortunately are subjected to some pretty uh, heinous treatment which I'll detail in this video. Um, you can find out more about what a targeted individual is simply by Googling or YouTubing uh, the words targeted individual or gang stalking. And you'll see uh, the videos and postings and articles and stuff like that about what a targeted individual is. Uh, and on YouTube, you'll actually hear the stories of other targeted individuals of videos that they posted about what their experiences are. Um, they won't be that different from what you hear from me today. Um, I think mine might be a little bit more comprehensive in explaining exactly what a targeted individual is and what a targeted individual experiences on a, on a day to day basis. Um, so I'll just go straight to it. Um, talking about gang stalking in general, which is what a targeted individual experiences. Uh, the goal of gang stalking is literally uh, to drive a targeted individual crazy. Uh, it's a very comprehensive program, and it's sadly it's a government program. Uh, its roots are in uh, programs known as MK Ultra and Co Intel Pro, which should have been eliminated, but unfortunately uh, they are still around. They're not only still around, but they're actually far more comprehensive and, and more detailed than they, they were even when those programs were popular. Um, but like I said, the goal is literally to isolate the person, um, make them destitute uh, and financially unstable to the point where they can't take care of themselves. Many targeted individuals live in homeless shelters and on the street. Um, and they employ various tactics to accomplish their goal of destroying targeted individuals. Um, the most common uh, experience that you'll you'll hear is, and why why the term gang stalking comes about is because they'll have people follow you around uh, whenever you go into public places. Like if you're driving on the street, people in cars will follow you around, and they make themselves very known that they are there and they are present and they are looking at you. Um, if you go any public place like going shopping or anything like that. They'll follow you around the stores. Uh, and as sick as this may sound, I've even had uh, stalkers follow me into church um, while I was in uh, Las Cruces uh, and in Houston. I've had uh, stalkers follow me into church uh, to harass me. Uh, that's how sick this program is. It's literally to keep the targeted individual agitated, stressed out, and never really have their mind at ease to make them paranoid. Uh, they employ isolation tactics. Um, they basically try to convince your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers uh, that they should be keeping an eye on you for whatever reason they do this. Uh, some of them they pay. They pay off to, to keep an eye on you, to look at you uh, in strange ways. Um, they do this through blackmail. They blackmail individuals into uh, stalking you and harassing you, looking at you. Um, and they do this to people who actually are real criminals. Targeted individuals are, are typically just regular Joes, every or day ordinary innocent people. Uh, and somehow we ended up on this ungodly evil list of people who have their lives literally destroyed on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, another way that they coerce everyday citizens into participating in harassing uh, targeted individuals is that they uh, 
they'll they'll tell them lies like you're under investigation for something or you've committed a crime or they should keep an eye on you because you're crazy. Um, and as you can see right now, I am totally not crazy. I'm, I'm completely sane, but they've employed these tactics against me as well to try to make me appear uh, to be a crazy person. Um, to the targeted individual who hasn't yet discovered that they're a targeted individual or doesn't know exactly uh, what it means to be a targeted individual, this experience can be pretty troubling uh, because all you do is you just notice that people are are paying extra attention to you. People are staring at you uh, in strange ways and stuff like that. And that can make you very uneasy naturally. Um, there's a saying that people do anything for money. And basically if they're doing it not only for money, but also based on a lie, it's, it's, it's weird because they get this sort of altruistic thing because they think they're helping to prevent crime or something like that. So they have that altruistic feeling, plus they get money for it. To, but what they don't realize is that many of those people are just participating in an evil, ungodly program that's designed to debilitate people like me, everyday, ordinary citizens. Um, and, and to be honest, you know, it's just not fair because we didn't do anything to end up on this list. Um, eventually due to the targeted individual's own fear and apprehension as well as the, his friend's co-workers apprehension that's been given to them in a false way uh, the targeted individual starts to withdraw uh, and isolates himself and he's alone and that basically helps them to continue uh, in with the gang stalking program uh, which is designed to destroy him um, so I'm going to talk about some of the particular gang stalking methods that are utilized uh, to harass targeted individuals. The first one I want to talk about is called anchoring. Basically with anchoring, uh, and this will sound very strange the way I, the way I explain this, but you have uh, what's called control panel stalkers. Uh, these are the people who are basically in an operation center monitoring all the targeted individuals throughout the United States of America. And then you have street level stalkers. These are the people that they actually employ to interact with targeted individuals on a, on a day to day basis. Um, but with anchoring, they will set up situations and scenarios to try to convince the targeted individual uh, that a particular person or a particular group is the one that's actually harassing them. For example, I've had her target individuals say that they thought everybody in the fire department was out to get them. Um, in my particular scenario, what, what they do for me is uh, most of the people who harass me and interact with me are wearing sunglasses and stuff like that. Very, very dark sunglasses and they'll make their presence very known. They'll look at me uh, in weird ways uh, to try to make me paranoid or arouse fear in me or something like that. Um, but also, one thing that they did with me is try to convince me that my neighbors uh, were the ones who were actually harassing me. Uh, when I would be in my apartment at night, um, and they were very successful about, at this for about two months. Uh, two months before I realized that I was actually a targeted individual, or what a targeted individual even, even was, I would hear uh, voices in in my apartment explaining what it was that I was doing. If I went to the kitchen, they'd say stuff, like, oh, he's headed to the kitchen now. Or if I went to the bathroom, they'd like, oh, he's headed to the bathroom. And this sounds bad, but one particular time I didn't wash my hands, I was like, look at him. He doesn't even wash his hands when I was in the bathroom after I used the bathroom. This is the type of stuff that they do. And because I'm hearing these voices, I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, somebody is listening to me. And, and naturally, you know, you think that it's the person closest to you. So I thought it was my neighbors above me that somehow they had installed a video camera in my apartment. Uh, and I realized that, that later that wasn't the case. But I'll explain in the video later exactly what that is um, that, that gave me that false belief. Um, the next method they use that I want to talk about is called brighting. Brighting can be very irritating. And it sounds just like what it is. Uh, when you're driving on the road, for example, uh, a person may flash their bright lights in your face. Like when you're coming oncoming traffic, people will have their bright lights on you. Now, it's not unusual, obviously, to experience somebody with their bright lights on you. I mean, it's not unusual at all. Uh, people often forget, you know, that their brights are on when they're riding at night. And then, you know, you just give them that quick flash and they'll flick it back to the regular uh, uh, dimmer lights. Um, 
But with brightening, they if you give them that quick flash, they don't actually click it back to the regular dimmer lights. They'll keep on uh, the bright lights. Uh, and this is not something that, it's not like a one-time occurrence. This, you know, it, you expect to have something like that on a long trip happen once or twice just because that's what happens. It's happenstance. But this will happen like 10 times in, in one short trip. Uh, not only with oncoming traffic, but people will come up behind you and basically when they're tailgating you and they have their bright lights on, individuals will come up really quickly and pass you. And then as they're passing you, they'll flick their bright lights on so they're shining your side mirrors and stuff like that. That's brighting. Uh, brighting takes a, another form as well. When you're in your home, uh, individuals will uh, shine bright lights into the windows of your home. Uh, for example, they might pull up in your driveway and shine very bright lights into into the, the door or windows of your home. Uh, it's, again, it's not unusual for that type of thing to happen. People do get lost and have to turn around, but this will happen several times in one night. Uh, and basically, that's just their way of letting you know that they are present and that they are. It's a way of harassment that, you know, your mind can never really be at ease. Your mind can never you'll always be paranoid because, you know, there's always somebody there to interact with you in these strange ways to arouse fear in you and, and not let your mind be at ease. Um, the next uh, method that they utilize in gang stalking is what I would call a noise campaign. Um, this can be just as irritating as brighting. Uh, basically, the targeted individual is, is subjected to a constant bout of noise that is never ending. It's designed to keep the targeted individual on edge. Uh, it happens at all times of the day, uh, and it's exacerbated at nighttime. I mean, it's really, really bad at nighttime because the goal is to keep the targeted individual from getting sleep which is what human beings need. It's a, we naturally need sleep for our body's natural restoration. Uh, so the goal is to prevent you from sleeping so that you'll be anxious and agitated and edgy. Uh, and basically just your stress hormones will be through, through the roof, and which only exacerbates those feelings of paranoia and fear and stuff like that. Um, so how do they do that? Again, they, uh, well, the particular ways that I've experienced and that I've heard other targeted individuals talk about is like there'll be loud music all around all around them like from their neighbors and stuff like that uh, cars will be passing by constantly at a very rapid paces making noises and blowing their car horns and stuff like that um, your neighbors around you will be screaming and talking loudly this can be really irritating if you live in an apartment complex um, and the craziest tactic that they use to generate noise is they do it through uh, machine generated sounds, things like uh, fake dogs barking or chickens crowing and uh, duck calls and stuff like that. Just really strange things to just constantly generate noise so that you can never really get relaxation as a targeted individual. Um, and, and like I said, they accomplish these tasks by paying your neighbors. Uh, making it lie to your neighbors, telling them you you know you did something wrong, and so their neighbors actually think that they're helping and stopping a crime or some sort of investigation or something like that. Or they blackmail your neighbors if your neighbors actually have done something wrong or something like that. Uh, my personal experiences with a noise campaign, I want to talk about a little bit about that. Um, the one I want to talk about most is the one that made me actually realize that I was a targeted individual. Um, after experiencing so much harassment in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where I was living at the time for a while, I decided uh, I was going to go to uh, Houston just to get away from a while. For a while, I had several friends in Houston. That's where I used to live and where I used to work. Um, so I went to go visit my friend Kimberly Snag, and while I was in Houston, I was staying in, in Kimberly's mom's house, which is in Fifth Ward, uh, a real quiet neighborhood, mostly old people. Um, uh, residential area but while I was there every 10 minutes cars would be flying down the street just flying down the street making at rapid paces making loud noise uh, and about every 30 minutes or so I would hear car horns like people blowing their car horns and the goal was obviously to, to keep me under the noise campaign and uh, not really get to relax and the strangest thing and this is the thing that really Peek, peek, peek my mind to hey there's something more going on here 
this is kind of crazy. Um, behind the house, I kept hearing this strange cockadoodle-doo noise of like a rooster. Um, but it, it was the same cockadoodle-doo without any variation to it. Uh, so it was obvious that it was like a machine and it wasn't a real rooster. Um, and on top of that, it was like from from two to it was nonstop. But I noticed it when it was like from two to four p.m. in the afternoon, which is kind of atypical for a rooster to be crowing nonstop from two to four in the afternoon. And this went on for several days because I stayed uh, in Kim's mom's house for like three or four days. And it went on for several days, the cars and the rooster and all that. Um, and that's the thing that really made me realize, you know what, uh, something more is going on here um, than, you know, me just having these bad experiences in Las Cruces. And when I was in Houston, people continued to follow me around in like stores and stuff like that, too, and really make their presence felt. Uh, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, some of the other uh, noise campaign experiences I had uh, when I was in Las Cruces. Uh, my neighbors were constantly making noise. I lived in this apartment complex, Pearl Ridge Apartments, for a year and a half, and I, I, I never had any issues with noise. But in the last few months that I was there, uh, it was constantly noise around me. Uh, my neighbors were constantly playing loud music, constantly talking loud and screaming and stuff like that. And one particular night, the neighbor above me was playing music really, really loud. So I didn't want to be that that neighbor that that complains on everyone. So what I did was I just put some earplugs in my ear um, and uh, tried to nestle in and go to sleep. Uh, shortly after I put these earplugs in my ear, uh, my bed actually is on the wall adjoining uh, one of my neighbors, the neighbor that was behind me. Uh, and the headboard is literally on that adjoining wall. As soon as I put the earplugs in, uh, I started hearing these extremely loud sex sounds. Uh, now, mind you, I've lived here a year and a half. Uh, I've slept in my apartment a year and a half, and I've never heard any noises come out of this apartment, uh, sex or otherwise. But on this particular night, well, I'd heard for those few months, I've heard, I heard music and stuff like that and, and loud talking and screaming. But on this particular night, as soon as I put the earplugs in, these loud sex sounds just started coming out of nowhere. Um, so that kind of let me know, okay, this is part of the this stupid harassment that I'm experiencing. Um, and another noise campaign experience I had, this one is particularly bad and particularly devastating because it's actually from a family friend, and that was very hurtful. But I was staying at my, uh, at my friend Monica Johnson's home uh, with her family, um, and I think I know why they participated in my stalking. Uh, and I hate to spill the beans on anybody, but, you know, this is kind of my last words. But her husband, Marshall, smokes marijuana. And so I think, honestly, that they were blackmailed into uh, participating in my stalking uh, on some sort of fear that he would, you know, face criminal prosecution for marijuana possession or marijuana use or something like that. Um, but what happened while I was there is that and this wasn't the first time I stayed in their home, by the way. So this is completely atypical. But while I was there, everyone was talking really, really loudly and screaming at all hours of the night. There were three TVs on in the house, and they were on full blast, just blaring. I was trying to sleep on the couch in the living room, and Monica and Marshall's bedroom is actually downstairs. They had their TV on in the bedroom, and it was just blaring on full blast. Uh, and then at about 3 a.m., Monica came out the room, walked outside, um, and then came back in, slammed the door, was screaming at the top of her lungs about how her daughter, Brittany's uh, red SUV, had just been repossessed because she missed a payment. Uh, and it was so strange because I don't know how she could have heard from where she was at in the house uh, anybody, any car come up and repos any tow truck come up to repossess the car because. I actually would have had a better vantage point, and there's nothing wrong with my hearing. To have heard a tow truck, I heard no tow truck whatsoever. But I, but what I did hear was her making all sorts of noise, uh, basically to try to keep me from relaxing and getting any sleep that particular night. Um, the next 
harassment technique I want to talk about is ghosting. And this isn't actually one that I experienced, but other targeted individuals, when you watch their videos, they'll talk about it and, you, and you'll get to hear their stories. But basically, this is where uh, they will rearrange a targeted individual's personal belongings. Um, for example, they'll might break into their house, which in and of itself is wrong. They'll break into their house, rearrange their furniture or rearrange things on their desk or in their bedroom. Um, they'll actually rearrange uh, lawn ornaments and stuff like that that are in the yard. So when the target individual returns back to their home, they see that things are sort of out of place. And that obviously uh, arouses fear and paranoia and apprehension and stuff like that to so further exacerbate this evil, ungodly program that they participate in to try to harass targeted individuals. Um, the next technique I want to talk about is called mimicry. Uh, this involves uh, when a targeted individual encounters one of their stalkers, the stalker will actually uh, do everything that they literally do everything, the same movement, same motions that the targeted individual does. Uh, so it's very irritating. And these particular stalkers make their presence very known. Um, I had this experience once when I was in Weewa uh, at the Easy Serve gas station. I pulled into the gas station to pump some gas. Uh, and as when I pulled in, this guy comes from behind the pump next to me. And he has on these dark sunglasses, really dark sunglasses, which is my particular stimuli that they've used in my stalking experience. But these really dark sunglasses, he looks at me and then he starts waving his hands and moving his head to try to basically get my attention. Hey, I'm here. Um, and I ignored him at first. And then I went to go start washing my window. So I'm washing the front window. As I start washing my front window, he starts washing his front window and he's looking at me while he's washing his front window with these dark shades on. So then I move to the side window and he moves to the side window and he's looking at me with these dark shades on and washing his window. And it was really creepy. Everything I did, he did. But, you know, I ignored it. That's just one of the things that targeted individuals experience is this kind of harassment to try to make you frustrated or angry or paranoid or nervous or, you know, start to kind of question, you know, what in the world is going on with me? Um, but I know beyond a shadow of, uh, of a doubt that there's nothing going on with me. I mean, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but one of power, one of love and one of a sound mind. And I thank him for having a sound mind. Uh, I know that nothing is going on with me and that it was absolutely just part of this evil ungodly program. Next thing I want to talk about, technique I want to talk about is called sensitization. Um, and this one is pretty critical for the overall targeted individuals harassment program. Uh, this refers to basically they want the targeted individual to associate a particular stimuli with their harassment. For example, if whenever you're out in the public as a target individual, if you encounter people wearing blue baseball caps, um, you start to associate blue baseball caps with you being harassed. So that way, going forward, anytime you see a person in a blue baseball cap, you'll instantly think, is this person here to harass me? Um, in my particular situation, they used uh, dark sunglasses as my as my stimuli. Um, and it worked very, very well at first. I got to the point where every time I saw someone in dark gun glasses, I would kind of freak out. I would be looking at them extra um, because I thought that person was there to harass me. Uh, this is before I knew I was a targeted individual. After I knew I was a targeted individual and realized that this was just part of the game, perception is reality, um, I, real I was able to calm myself down. I still was paranoid. I'd see people in dark sun, even now. I see people in dark sunglasses and they get extra attention from me uh, because that was that's part of the game. Uh, but then I just remind myself, look, I'm a targeted individual. This is part of the game. This is perception. This perception is reality. And I'm able to kind of calm those fears. Um, the next technique I want to talk about is, is called mobbing. Uh, and this particular technique uh, happens most often when a when a target starts to realize that maybe there's something more going on uh, to their experiences uh, that meets the eye or maybe uh, maybe the target is already in a in kind of a flustered or frustrated state uh, then you experience what's called mobbing and that's when you get 
harassed by several stalkers at one time. Um, and this is basically designed as a scare tactic to, to really drive the target into paranoia. Um, this happened to me on several occasions uh, because I have a pretty low anger threshold. This happened to me on so many occasions. Um, uh, if I like, I'd be driving along the street uh, and five, ten cars will pass by all at the same time, all at the same time. Everybody has dark shades and they're not watching the road. They're watching me. <laughs> like they're not looking at the road like a normal driver would do. As they pass by, they're looking directly at me. Uh, so it's very creepy. Um, but that's that's what mobbing is. It also happened to me a few times in the grocery store where people would come with dark shades on and sometimes not with dark shades on. They just come very much into my personal space uh, in a way that's unnatural, not not the way a normal person would shop or a, a normal person would behave even outside the grocery store. Um, and they'd be looking directly at me to make sure, you know, your present, their presence is felt, their presence is known to, to the targeted individual. Um, the next gang stalking technique I want to talk about is called hacking. Uh, hacking is just like what it sounds. Basically, they will download uh, viruses and malware onto the targeted individual's computers and like other electronic devices like their cell phone and stuff like that. Uh, to either try to damage files or more importantly, what I think it is, is to try to gain remote access to their electronic devices so that they can modify things, delete things, and manipulate uh, the targeted individual's uh, files and data. Um, talk about some of my experiences with hacking. Uh, when I first realized that there was maybe more going on uh, that meets the eye in my particular scenario and I started to come to the realization that uh, that I was a targeted individual viruses and malware were downloaded onto my Toshiba laptop um, I would literally be working on my computer on something and then all of a sudden my mouse would start moving uh, and be clicking on things totally out of my control like I'm not touching the mouse or anything and the mouse is just kind of wiggling around and clicking on things and opening things and closing things and all sorts of, it was a very weird experience. Um, uh, and of course, again, is is designed to cause fear and apprehension and paranoia. Um, one night in particular, I was trying to buy a book by Renee Pittman Mitchell, who is a targeted individual who has written several books on her experience as a targeted individual. Uh, advice books and stuff like that, how to cope with this experience. And I was trying to purchase this book from Amazon and my phone, the browser on my phone kept closing on its own. Uh, and mind you, I, I've had this phone now. I had had that. I don't have that phone anymore. But at the time I had that phone for about just shy of two years and I'd never experienced anything like that at all when I was on my browser. But um, I'd be on my phone and trying to buy this book and all of a sudden the browser just closes, just shuts down. Uh, another experience I had with hacking, uh, I recently moved from Las Cruces, New Mexico to go back home to hoping that all of this would end when I, when I went back home. So I moved to Weewahitchka, Florida. It's a small town, about 1,700 people. Um, and I might be being generous saying 1,700 people. But I pretty much figured in this small town, there's no way they can stalk me. There's no way they can bother me. I'm fine. Uh, one of the ways that they did, I got a job working at the Taunton Family Children's Home, uh, doing some small legal work and stuff like that for them. And one of the projects I had, uh, there was a mom who had her daughter stolen away from her by the child's biological father, uh, who had not been in her life for, for a very long time. And so I was working on some family law documents to try to get her daughter returned to her. And I had pro I'm not a family lawyer. And um, and this was based on Tennessee law, and I'm not licensed to practice in Tennessee, so I spent a, about a day working on this particular document. And when I finished the document, uh, they basically shut down the computer. Um, the mouse starts moving and closing out things and shut down the computer. So when I turn the computer back on, there's a Thank God the auto recovery saved my document uh, and it wasn't I didn't lose all the, the file and all the data I had been working on because I was working under a time deadline. 
Uh, and that just goes to show how heartless and evil that this program really is. I mean, I'm trying to help a mom get her child back. And you're taking over my computer to try to kill the document. I mean, that's that's the kind of evil ungodliness we're dealing with with this particular program, uh, in, in my experience. Um, after that experience, uh, I went to Mr. David and Miss Abby, who run the children's home, and told them, look, something was going on with my computer. And they had a tech guy come in and download a bunch of antivirus software, and he showed me that. And so since since that happened, I, ha, has happened, I haven't really had to deal with the hacking aspect of things anymore, uh, like, I, like I had to prior. <laughs> the thing I want to talk about now is... The, the most critical aspect of gang stalking, and I'm going to be honest with you, it's kind of the, the hardest to believe as well, but it's real. It's very real. It sounds very science fiction. Uh, it's very crazy. And it's the linchpin that kind of holds their whole program together and enables them to keep it a secret from everybody else in society. Um, and it's called electronic harassment. Um, this is by far the most creepy and frightening uh, weapon in the, in the stalker's arsenal. Um, some of this technology is detailed in a book uh, written by Dr. Robert Duncan. Uh, this book is called Project Soul Catcher, Secrets of Cyber and Cybernetic Warfare Revealed. Uh, Dr. Robert Duncan actually designed a lot of the technology or participated in designing a lot of this technology. And so he details it in this book. Uh, and that's how you know it's real, because there is a legitimate professional uh, scientist who talks about the technology and its capabilities. Uh, and I would encourage all of you to read that book. If you have questions uh, and you're questioning whether or not this is even possible, read the book and you'll see that it very much is possible. Um, first thing I want to talk about is nanofibers through nanotechnology uh, and chemtrails. Uh, the control panel stalkers, stalkers who are basically in an operation center watching the target individuals, are able to monitor and do and induce all sorts of things in a target individual. So this is what make this is very freaky. They're able to manipulate a target individual's bodily functions, things like their pain receptors, uh, their stress hormones, stuff like that. It is absolutely creepy. Um, they're they're able to speed up a target individual's heart rate. Um, uh, to very rapid speeds and stuff like that, um, and they're able to, and they also have in their arsenal something that's called direct energy weapons, and I'll explain that in a little bit. It, in my experience with a direct energy weapon, it is, it is, I mean, it is so frightening. But here's been my personal experience with uh, electronic harassment, uh, and particularly the nanofiber aspect of it. Um, I've actually been induced to have panic attacks on two separate occasions. This is before I realized I was a targeted individual. Uh, I shouldn't say panic attacks, what I thought were panic attacks. Basically my heart rates just started speeding up very, very rapidly. It was just it was just going at full blast. And so it kind of freaked me out. I thought I was actually having a heart attack. And so I went to the hospital. I had the ambulance called. I was at work. I had the ambulance called to my job. They took me to the hospital and they said, oh, nothing's wrong. Everything's normal. Your EKG is just fine. And I'm thinking, well, how can my EKG be fine? Because my heart rate was going 90 miles an hour, you know, before you got here. Um, and so I just resolved that I was having panic attacks. But now I now, now I know a little bit more about the technology. I realized that I was not having panic attacks. And this is kind of when the harassment first started and that this was just part of the game. It was part of this sick game uh, to make me paranoid and to drive me crazy. Um the direct energy weapons. I mean, this is horrible. This is absolutely horrible, guys. And I would I would not wish this on even my worst enemy. It is such a frightening experience. Um, I got hit with direct energy weapons twice. Um, and, and I can just explain to you what I felt. That's the most I can do because I don't fully understand the technology. But literally, in one moment, I'm just fine. And then the next moment, I'm extremely intensely hot. Um, and I have like this tingling feeling all over, literally all over my body where I've just been heating up almost like I'm cooking inside, like my insides are cooking. Uh, and I broke out in the sweat 
And it, it only lasted for like a minute or two, but it leaves you so dizzy and disoriented and just out of it that, I mean, you're frightened. You are frightened and you're wondering like, what in the world is going on with me? Um, and that's, that's the direct energy weapons and that's what I experienced there. And like I said, I wouldn't wish that on even my worst enemy. Um, and the last technology I want to talk about, and this is Dr. Duncan's, uh, really his work. Um, a lot of this is his work. Uh, and this is what's known as psychotronic weapons. I would encourage any of you to kind of just Google that term, psychotronic weapons. Um, and this is voice of God weapons or voice of God technology uh, and image induction technology. And this sounds very freaky in science fiction, but it's also very real. Again, I would encourage you to take a look at his book if you don't believe me. Or just YouTube Dr. Robert Duncan, and you may even find some videos about uh, his technology on YouTube. Um, but basically, uh, through the use of microwave radio frequency radiation, control panel stalkers are able to literally induce sound into the cochlea of a target individual's ear um, to make it appear as though they are hearing voices. And I know that sounds totally crazy, but trust me, get the book, find out something about Robert Duncan, and you'll see that it's real. Um, and this is the linchpin of the entire gang stalking program, um, because to the target individual that doesn't know that they're a target individual or doesn't know exactly uh, how this technology works and, and fits into the whole scheme of them being a target individual. All you know is that you're hearing voices. You're hearing voices in your ear. And so um, you start to think maybe you're schizophrenic or you're having some sort of psychotic episode. Uh, and if you try to explain to somebody else, hey, uh, I'm hearing voices in my ear, then naturally they're going to have the same conclusion. They're going to think, OK, you're being schizophrenic or you're having some kind of psychotic episode. And reality is that you're not. It's these voice of God weapons. Um, and, and this only serves to further isolate the person uh, with their isolation tactics, because if you tell, you know, a friend or a family member or a coworker or acquaintance, hey, you know, I'm hearing these voices, uh, those people are naturally going to want to stay away from you. And because you're trying to come to them for help or explain to them something you have, then you're going to naturally withdraw when you're pushed away like that. And so you're only further isolated. Um, but please, again, review the book. You'll see that it's real. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the image induction technology is sort of based on the same principles in biotechnology as the voice of God weapons. Um, control panel stalkers are, are literally able to induce images into a, a targeted individual's mind. Uh, this is typically done while the targeted individual is sleeping. Uh, they'll induce images into your mind, which of course, you know, you ends up turning into one of your dreams or something like that. It's really creepy. Um, and it works in reverse. As creepy as this may sound, it works in reverse as well. Uh, control panel stalkers are able to see any images originating in the target individual's mind, uh, both actual images and fictional images. And by actual images, I mean, like literally, they can see what I see out of my own two eyes. They can see what I what I'm looking at out of my own two eyes through this image induction technology. Uh, but they can also see fictional images. So any 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 thoughts of images that are in my mind. So if I'm if I'm thinking about something in my memory, something that happened several years ago, and I have an image of that in my mind, then they can actually see that too. Or if I'm imagining something, there's an image that I'm imagining in my mind, they can actually see that too. And I know that sounds very science fiction, very crazy, but again, look at Dr. Robert Duncan's book, you'll see that it's not. Um, the effectiveness of the voice of God weapons to the overall gang stalking agenda and program to harass targeted individuals. I, I want to explain that to get you to understand, uh, hopefully not, not just you, but also targeted individuals to understand how this all fits together. Um, because it, again, it's, it's sort of the linchpin control panel stalkers are able to, just like they can induce sound into a target's ear, they can induce sound into a street level stalker's ear as well. Um, 
And that way, this allows control panel stalkers to, in a very discreet way, let um, street level stalkers know about the presence of a targeted individual uh, in their general area. And they're able to give them directions on how to interact with the target. You know, things like, you know, you should back up or you should look at him or oh, he's coming up on your right. To the targeted individual who doesn't know anything about the technology, they just wonder, oh, my God, how do these people keep finding me? Uh, and how do they know where I'm at? Uh, but reality is that it's through this technology. Um, fortunately, I was able to figure out um, through researching online and yeah, through researching online, I was able to figure out about this technology. Uh, unfortunately, many targets have not, and so it only adds to their paranoia and and. And some of them probably never will, and that's just kind of sad. It, it only further exacerbates kind of the stress and paranoia and stuff that they experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And for this part of the video, that's all. Um, and I'll, I'll pick up a, a little bit later with more. Uh, thank you.